Hello, today I will present my iPad's paper characterizing the adversarial vulnerability of speech self-supervised learning. Today's presentation is divided into five parts, motivation, background, proposed attack method, experiments, and the conclusion. For the motivation, this paper's idea is based on a leaderboard named Superb, and the leaderboard aims at benchmarking the performance of speech self-supervised learning models. And it shows that speech self-supervised learning models greatly improve the performance of downstream tasks and arouses more attention in the speech community. However, the adversarial robustness of such paradigm haven't been investigated. So in this work, we do some early study to investigate the adversarial vulnerability of such paradigm proposed by Superb. Then let's get into the background of this paper. Uh, so let's first look at what is adversarial attack. In this figure, we have a well-trained image classification model. Given a picture of cats, the model will predict cats with high confidence. However, the attackers can find some small adversarial noise and add it to the original image to get the attacked image. The attacked image is very similar to the original one from humans, from humans' eyes, but the network will predict something else. Uh, using such adversarial noise to generate adversarial samples to attack the machine learning models is called adversarial attack. And then I'd like to talk about the paradigm introduced by Superb. The paradigm is shown in this figure. Uh, the self-supervised learning models play the role of upstream models. The upstream models learn some general purpose knowledge from a large amount of non-unlabeled data. The features extracted from the upstream model will be used for downstream tasks. The upstream model is fixed during, uh, during downstream training and the inference. Following the superb paradigm, given the audio data X as the input, it will first go through the pre-processing procedure. And the, the pre-processed audio data X prong are fed into the upstream model to extract the hidden features H1 to Hn. Then these hidden features are followed by the layer-wise weighted sum procedure to get the final embedding Z. Then these features are adopted to uh, train the inference, uh, train, and the inf train, train the downstream model and do the inference. For upstream models, in this paper, we use two models, namely Hilbert and the wave to vector 2.0. Hilbert adopts bird style token classification for pre-training. Wave to vector 2.0 learns general purpose knowledge by contrastive learning. And the, the main reason we choose these two models is that in the settings of the superb, the two models both get excellent performance in all the downstream tasks. Then let's get into the third part, attack method. Note that the adversarial attack are conducted only in the inference time. The main idea is that once we can destroy the embeddings extracted by the upstream model, the destroyed embeddings will let the downstream model give wrong answer, fulfilling the attack, attack targets. So here, Z is our target to destroy. Then let's talk about how to generate adversarial samples to destroy the embedding Z. 
uh, actually, the word destroy here means that we want to maximize the difference between the genuine embeddings and the adversarial embeddings. Here, we use ZA to stand for the genuine embeddings and ZA tilde uh, denotes, denotes the adversarial embeddings. But at the same time, we want the genuine audio and the adversarial audio X tilde as similar as possible. So in order to fulfill the two objectives, we introduce the uh, basic iterative method for attack. And for more details of BIM, please refer, please refer to this paper. For the pretrained model, attackers can find some tiny, tiny noise, the adversarial noise, uh, as previous slides show, uh, and add, add such small noise to the, to the audio to generate the adversarial samples. Then the adversarial embeddings will become very different from the original one and thus makes the performance of all the downstream models drop. In order to do attack, the attackers just need to know the pre-trained upstream model without the need to know which downstream model is used. Based on the knowledge accessed by the attackers, we set two different attack scenarios. Uh, for the limited knowledge attackers, they can access the internals of the target upstream model, including the detailed param parameters and the gradients, uh, but they do not know which downstream task will be conducted. So they also do not know the internals of the downstream models, the weight, the weights of the layer-wise which is some procedure and the pre-processing procedure. And the zero knowledge attackers even don't know the internals of the target models. In such a case, a proxy model is trained for approximating the gradients for adversarial sample generation. Then let's get into the experiments. For the setting of our experiments, because you know the adversarial attack is time time consuming and the resource consuming, we randomly selected 100 general samples for attack. We repeat the experiments three times and uh, show the mean and the variance of the attack performance. Also, we introduce the Gaussian noise with the same signal to noise ratio for comparison as the baseline. Uh, let's, go, let's get into the experimental results. Note that the direction of the arrow in the second row denotes the direction towards the better performance of the downstream task. For example, downstream arrow for ASR means that the lower the word error rates, the better the ASR performance. So for attacks, because we want the model perform worse, the higher the word error rate implies the more powerful the attack. And the first column denotes the method to generate the attack versus the target model. For example, with two vector dash with two vector denotes that the proxy for the proxy model for generating adversarial samples is with two vector 2.0 and the target model is also with two vector 2.0. Here, row A and the row E denotes uh, the, the denotes the limited knowledge attack scenarios. Row Row B and the row F denotes the zero knowledge attack scenarios. Row C and the row G denotes using the samples perturbed by Gaussian noise. Row D and the row H 
denotes the performance for clean samples. And we can see from D and H, without adversal attack, the downstream models perform very well. From row A and uh, row E, we can see uh, limited knowledge attackers achieve effective attack performance for all the downstream tasks. Take, take ASR as an example. Our attack uh, de degrades the word error rate of wave to vector from zero to 19.2%. And for all other uh, eight tasks, we can also observe the similar trends. From row C and uh, row G, we can observe sim sim simply adding Gaussian noise cannot degrade a well-trained system for the attack pur purpose. And from row B and uh, row F, we can see zero knowledge attackers achieve relatively weaker attack performance than uh, the limited knowledge attackers. But the attack performance is better than using Gaussian noise. Here comes the conclusion. Adversal robustness is, the, uh, is an AI standard for trustworthy machine learning systems. Although the paradigm proposed by Superb is going to penetrate all the speech processing tasks and against good performance, the adversal robustness haven't been considered. So in this work, we do some early study to expose the vulnerability of such paradigm to adversal attacks. And in the future work, we will investigate attacks with higher transferability and less imperceptibility. The long-term goal is to come up with adaptive defense methods that offer protection against dangerous attacks. That's all I have today. Thank you.